Hitanga Movement is one of the longest running political institutions in New Zealand. It was founded in 1858 and continues until the present day. The movement has continued to develop and maintain its importance in leadership roles, enhancing the manner and serenity of Maori iwi. So how did it start? Some Maori attributed the power of the British to their one sovereign. Maori tribes and iwi traditionally functioned independently under the leadership of their own chiefs. In the 1850s, Maori were faced with increasing numbers of British settlers arriving and a growing demand from the Crown to purchase land. Maori decided they lacked political power and they believed that a pan-tribal movement to unify the Maori people under one sovereign would be equal to the Queen of England and bring an end to intertribal conflicts, so they decided to find a king. The Waikato chief Patato Te Whero Whero was nominated and became the first king of Aotearoa. When Patato died after a two-year reign, his son Tafwayo became king in 1860. In 1863, government troops invaded the Waikato, resulting in the Waikato War. The Waikato was defeated and huge areas of their land were confiscated. Tafwayo and his followers had to retreat into King Country as the colonial government attempted to destroy the movements, only returning in 1881 to try and retrieve their confiscated land. Retrieval of the land was unsuccessful, so Tafwayo then travelled to England to seek the Queen's support in 1884. Tafwayo then set up the Kahunga Nui Kingitanga Parliament and began annual visits to the Kingitanga Marae. After Tafwayo's death in 1890, he was replaced by his son Mahuta. The pattern continues for the next two kings, Terata Mahuta and Korohi Mahuta. After Korohi died in 1966, his daughter, Te Aitaranga Kahu, the first Maori queen, was crowned. She was also made a dame in 1970. After the queen died, the current king, Tuhei Tupaki, began his reign. The loss of ancestral lands is a vital concern for the Maori, using their land management system to protect and enhance the land. Soil is an important cultural resource for the Maori and their way of living. The land was not only physically but spiritually significant to the people. They used it for plant cultivation and kumara was one of their main resources. The land also had an important cleansing role from the Maori perspective, it was only through the process of passing waste through Papa Tuanuku that the life force of the water was restored. The Tata Te Whero Whero established a boundary line along the Mangatauro River between the territory in which he had authority and that of what the governor held. The aim of this was not to oppose the control of the crown, but simply to provide authority within the lands that were under his authority. For the Maori people, Kingitanga was a development for the Maori people, not a push against the European government. British unity under the crown was perceived as a strength, and supporters of the Kingitanga believed that if Maori could replicate the sense of unity, they would have a better chance with understanding the full impact of colonisation. The principles of Te Tiriti o Watangi, such as Tino Ranga Tiratanga, e equity, active protection options and partnership were compromised through the Kingitanga. For the Maori perspective, they were not going against the Tiriti, contrasting the British saw the movement as a threat to the authority of the British Crown. Tino Ranga Tiratanga Ratanga was not upheld, equity was not met, protection was not provided to the extent Mary thought they were receiving, and the partnership was turned into racism and segregation. King Tuihi Tiapaki still reigns as king to this day and stands firm in the rights for the Mary people.